let's piss off some fan bases. To start oh, yeah. Off, shall we? I, I think that's the best way we could possibly start this off. Let's make some people really angry. AP New AP poll came out yesterday, as it does every Sunday. Looking at the top 20 as we sit here going into week three, what is one team that you would bet the farm is not going to make the college football playoff? Man, I kind of waffled on this a little bit. And uh, again, this is the the rational conversations, right? Taking a couple of days to digest it, right? Uh, but I kind of waffled on this a little bit. There's a couple that I'm nervous about. You know, there's teams like Michigan who I'm like, yeah, you know, but I can't really commit to Michigan not doing it because I know what they have on campus. They got that, you know, kind of winning thing going on. I know they didn't look good against Texas, but they still could do it. They are the defending national champions. You know, you got Utah, you know, maybe losing Cam Rising. Not really sure what they're going to be losing there. Um, if he's going to be out for an extended period of time, if it's only a couple of games, they should be talented enough to float some of that schedule. Man, I got to tell you what, I think Notre Dame kind of <laughs> sealed their fate a little bit early in the season. And look, it, it kind of stinks because, you know, the, the Irish don't have that chance at a top seed, obviously not being in a conference. But when you look at the rest of their schedule, I'm not even convinced that, that after the performance we just saw out of the Irish, that they can run their schedule like we thought they might. A week ago, right? They looked really good against what we thought was a really good AM defense. And, you know, I think still probably is a really good AM defense. And and you know, thought maybe these are the guys who are gonna be able to just shut people down and and find a way to overcome whatever they're facing. And then NIU comes to town and massive, massive sleeper and, and massive upset. So I'm looking at the rest of the schedule for Notre Dame. I'm, I'm looking at a couple of games like, you know, look at Miami, Ohio. I think that's a better team out of the MAC than Northern Illinois. Um, I think that's, you know, I mean, they're the defending champions or everybody, pretty much everybody's picked to win that conference. Um, I did have NIU making the championship game in the MAC, but I still think Miami probably ends up winning it. Louisville, that's definitely not a slouch of a team. Georgia Tech's looked pretty good to start the season. Uh, obviously Florida state, maybe not as good anymore. We'll see. Uh, and then they finished the year at USC and I'm just kind of looking at the rest of the schedule saying, if your signature win is at A&M to start the season and you kind of have to float your reputation on that, I mean, they, like they're going to have to come up with some games at the end of the season that I don't know that they can, uh, especially considering how good a couple of these teams have looked. We'll talk about USC in a little bit, but like some of these teams have looked really, really good on their schedule that we maybe weren't expecting to look as good as they were. I, I don't think the Irish make the playoff at this point. I think they're going to finish with two or three losses and and probably just miss out on the playoff by you know a couple of spots. They'll do like the honorable mentions and stick them at like 13 or something like that. Uh, but I just don't think they're going to make the playoff. Well, they lost their, their get out of jail free card this mm -hmm. past weekend. That's what's terrible because – with that schedule that you mentioned, you mentioned off a lot of teams that could jump up and get them on a good day for them and a bad day for the Irish. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of teams that move the needle from a national perception standpoint. They were counting yeah. on Florida State to be a good quality win. That's not looking like it's going to be good unless things change really quickly in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. USC is looking a lot better than we thought preseason. But yeah. if you lose to USC and they're 10-2, and two, that doesn't really move the needle. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing about USC is, let's say that you go into that game and you've got just the one loss still. USC is probably going to be in a position to try to make the playoff. Like, I, I think they're probably going to be in a playoff position towards the end of the season based on how they've come out so far. Um, and so if they are in a position to make the playoff and they're playing this game at home and it's the last game of the season and they're, you know, looking forward to it and they just got to find this one win. That might even, I mean, we don't really know how the season's going to play out. That could be for a spot in the Big Ten championship game, possibly. Like, that, there's a chance USC could be playing with a lot on the line. You think they come in there with a lot on the line and they're going to just crap the bet? I mean, I guess it's possible, right? I mean, that's what Notre Dame did. They, they just you know, laid an egg. But I, I just think, you know, end of the season, tensions are the highest. Everyone's got to put on their best performance. What I saw out of Notre Dame in crunch time just now not what I was expecting versus USC even a week ago having to show up late against LSU found a way to get it done. And so I I'm starting to look at that and say, I, I don't even trust that they can win that game. Even if they win that game, that's going to be their only real chance at a statement win probably for the rest of the season. And at that point, it's all about like, what'd you do for me lately? Where are they ranked? How can they jump that high? Like if they're, if there's still only one loss at the end of the season and then they beat USC, how high can they jump? 
uh, where were they ranked at first? You know, where where do the college football playoff guys have them ranked? Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch for sure. I'm I'm really curious to see how this goes, but I, I just don't think Notre Dame makes it. Well, from a team that has uh, strength of schedule issues, I'll take you to a team that is going to run into some buzz saws. Didn't look exactly great against the soft part of their schedule. I'll tell, talk about the Oklahoma Sooners, currently ranked um, right there at number 15. Barely got by the Houston Cougars, 16 to 12 at home. They need a late safety to keep that from being a game where a field walk off field goal could get them. Garrett, I, it's it just doesn't seem like it's coming together early on in the season. Now everybody's allowed an oopsie game, right? And thankfully, uh, unlike Notre Dame, Oklahoma won their oopsie game. They snuck out of there with a victory against the Houston Cougars, a really, really bad team on paper. Better coach this year with Willie Fritz, I think, but a team that should not be competing with them with the talent that they have on the field. No. And they have not run into the meat of that schedule yet. If you go by the AP Top 25 this week, Oklahoma will face five of the top seven teams in the current Top 25. We tried to tell you. We tried to warn you guys that it was a very difficult schedule. And you know what? Without It, it starts this week when they play Tulane at home, a, a team that gave Kansas State all they could handle. Seemed like they were working out some kings. That's not going to be an easy game. After that Tulane game, they welcome Tennessee, go to Auburn. I know Auburn lost to Cal this week. They have a lot of problems, but that's mm-hmm. another talented team. But then the real meat hits. The Red River rivalry against Texas. And a South Carolina team that's riding high right now has a chance to make some waves against LSU this weekend. At Ole Miss, the main Black Bears at home at Mizzou, a bye week, Alabama, and at LSU. Garrett, if they can run that gauntlet, even if they lose two games, I say give them the number one seed. I don't care about the <laughs> rules. I don't care about the um, automatic bursts to the conference champions. They should write a rule that says if Oklahoma only loses two lot two games, down the stretch, they should be the number one seed because they will be the most battle-tested team in the country. I have a hint for you guys. I think they're going to lose more than two games. Yeah, I I actually kind of like that because this schedule is brutal, man. This schedule is as bad as it gets. Um, look, it's it's unfortunate, but like they've played two of the games that I think they've had the best chance of winning outside of that contest with Maine and you know the beginning of November. These are probably the two games you had to like really ramp up because again, Tulane is a good team that is waiting next week and, and, you know, they're probably really excited to get another chance at beating a team from a power conference. And then, yeah, like Tennessee has looked amazing on offense. They played really good defense. Um, Auburn, they could be breaking in a new quarterback at that point. Like I know a lot of Auburn fans want to see somebody that's not Peyton Thorne. And so if they're, if they're looking at a new quarterback, that could be a new quarterback trying to make a statement. We've seen brand new quarterbacks in the SEC show up for a first game and make a massive statement. So that could be a thing on the road for them. They play Texas, South Carolina, like you said, really coming off, you know, a, a great win. Uh, could be riding a little bit high. Ole Miss at Ole Miss, right? That's, that's going to be a tough game for them. At Missouri, that's also a really tough game. You finish the season with Alabama and at LSU. At LSU to finish the season, you're going to go to Baton Rouge. To finish your season, that's I'm sorry. Like, if you ask me right now, does Oklahoma have a better chance at making the playoff or not making a bowl game? I would say they have a better chance at not making a bowl game. There's so many tough games on this schedule right now that I would say there's almost no chance they could get to just two losses versus only making it to three more wins on this schedule. I think there's a lot more likely that they only get three more wins as opposed to you know only two losses. That's it's that would be pretty steep. And what's wild is I don't think they're a bad team. I, I no, think they have a lot solid. of talent. I think there's a lot of potential there. As Jackson Arnold gets more and more comfortable in the offense and running a team as a starting quarterback, there's a lot of potential there. Oklahoma fans need to write their congressman about the malpractice of this SEC schedule. Maybe write the congressman about the caveat that if they only lose two games, they should automatically get the number one seed too. Or write your congressman about your offensive line. That's another issue. You yeah, try the to offensive address. line's not looking good. <laughs> they're down, not good at all. I saw a stat that I think they're like six of 30-something yeah. on third down so far this year. Mm-hmm. It, it oh, is, and- it's been hard to sustain drives. Yeah, one of the things that I think Mitch wanted us to kind of bring up was the idea that like – the scheme isn't really the problem right now for Oklahoma. It's a lot more to do with the fact that your offensive line is kind of booty butt. 
Like it's it's just not really doing the job. And like if if you're gonna have that bad of an offensive line, it doesn't matter how good your quarterback is because I, I think they got a good quarterback. It doesn't matter how good your defense can play. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff because if your offensive line stinks, you're getting no time to actually run your offense. Right? They have to do a, a bare minimum job to get to a point where you can run your offense in the first place. So uh, I'm not saying that it's all over for the Sooners. I don't think that it's all over for the Sooners. They just got to find a way to turn this thing around. They got to find a way to, to you know, they, they need to look good against Tulane. They need to come out against Tulane and win by like 30. If they can win by 30, that can be they the kind of confidence, confidence you need. Right. You need something like that to boost your confidence going into Tennessee because after Tulane, it, it's, I mean, just an absolute meat grinder of a schedule. And and I think that they're going to be in for a little bit of hurt. And we tried to tell you, I'm not trying to sit here and, you know, go back and just dance on Sooner fans. Gray. It's not what we're trying to do. But like we tried to tell you in the offseason, like, hey, it might be rough because your schedule kind of stinks. And, you know, whoever it was at the SEC offices that decided to give your rivals down south the easiest possible schedule to enter the SEC with and you get the exact opposite. Like, I don't know who made that schedule and, and who hates you at the SEC offices, but you got to go talk to them about it because this isn't the SEC's fault. This isn't, you know, the, the other conference members fault. This, this is the SEC offices fault for doing this to you. And so. You know, look, you could have had a couple extra games against, a, you know, a Kentucky or a Vanderbilt or something like that. But instead, you know, we're we're here. This is where we are. Maybe I'm, you know, maligning Vanderbilt unfairly. Diego Pop. Hey, that, yeah, that's an undefeated player. Vanderbilt team. That too. is an undefeated Vanderbilt team. Maybe I'm maligning them unfairly. But yeah. it's still, it's, it's, it's a tough Kentucky's schedule. Kentucky's still game after what they put on the field on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Kentucky's yeah. absolutely fair game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Kentucky's, yeah, speaking of booty butt. Um, no, they're they're pretty bad. But no, like, again, your point at the beginning, a little bit of an optimism for Oklahoma. You have the chance to really prove something. Like, a lot of these teams that you're going to try to recruit directly against, you have on the schedule this year. So go beat all those teams, and you're going to go get a lot of recruits, and you're going to make some waves going into the offseason. You're going to get anybody you want in the portal. You're going to get anybody you want in recruiting if you can go and beat Tennessee and beat Texas and beat Ole Miss and beat, you know, Alabama or LSU. If you can go beat a bunch of those teams, that's going to make some pretty strong statements, even if you lose a couple, right? Like, even if you end up going 10 and 2, go beat a bunch of those teams. I think most people are going to be super impressed with the Sooners. So, yeah. look, it may not be over. Maybe you come out next week and your offensive line looks great and we just say, okay, never mind. Let's go. Let's have a season. But I, we just haven't seen it. No proof of concept yet. Gracious, yeah. How about that?